I mean, the process to build a car company is, is complex. It takes many pieces. It's a large team, hundreds of suppliers, hundreds of millions of dollars of capital, technology that allows performance that's unique and different, and then that all has to be wrapped into something that connects with the market and connects with the brands. That's the voice of RJ Scaringe, the founder and CEO of Detroit's newest automaker and the only exclusively electric vehicle company, Rivian. I'm Sven Gustafson, and this is your Daily Detroit for Wednesday, January 30th. And I'm Jer Stays. If you haven't heard of Rivian, you're not alone. The company has been around for nearly 10 years, but it doesn't actually sell any cars yet. Now, the Michigan-based company is getting out of stealth mode and showing some very public and very interesting signs of life. At the Los Angeles Auto Show last fall, Rivian unveiled an eye-catching truck and SUV, both completely zero emissions and all electric. The goal is to start manufacturing them for delivery starting in late 2020. If you follow Daily Detroit on social media, you may have seen that we did our first segment on Rivian for Detroit Public Television, and we'll include that video in the show notes. And well, with the subarctic weather today, we figured it was as good a time as any to use more of the audio we captured for an episode just for you. But first, this. Daily Detroit is brought to you in part by Bamboo Detroit. With an inclusive community, flexible modern offices, classes, and networking events, Bamboo Detroit helps entrepreneurs and innovative companies launch, land, or expand in Detroit. Become one of their more than 400 members today at BamboDetroit.com. Scaringe launched Rivian nearly a decade ago in his native Florida when he was just 26 years old. The company changed names twice before settling on Rivian. Where'd the name Rivian come from? So Rivian's a, a phonetically made up word. It, it sounds nice, but it's a combination of the word river and the word Indian, and I grew up on the, on the Indian River. And so it's the last three. Yep, in Florida. It's the last three letters of the word Indian and the first three letters of the word river uh, combined together. But the way we actually came up with it is uh, we couldn't come up with a good name. So we were you know, doing the classic at the whiteboard, putting all these things up and trying to sort of come up with words and names and everything meant something in another language. And what, we, what I actually did is we wrote a computer script and we input into a database all the things that had meaning in some way to the company. And then the script actually combined and sort of made words with a set of rules we laid out in terms of where vowels and consonants go. That's cool. And then the output from that was cross-checked with databases for uh, you know, different words in different languages. And out of that long list of potential combinations came uh, Rivian. Today, Rivian makes its main headquarters in a former cash register factory in Plymouth that once belonged to the Burroughs Corporation. At one time, that was a big technology company based here in Detroit. About 350 people work in the redeveloped, light-filled, and airy space designing, engineering, and marketing the company's electric vehicles. The company also operates a battery lab in Southern California, a self-driving software R&D center in the Bay Area, and a small engineering office in England. Despite being based here in Detroit, Rivian didn't have an exhibit at this year's Detroit Auto Show. That's because Scringe says the company has limited bandwidth, and he knows that the market for electric vehicles is a lot bigger in L.A. than it is here in Detroit. So we spent a lot of time putting all those pieces together before we showed anything. We wanted to make sure that we weren't just showing an idea or showing a sketch or showing a rendering, that we were actually showing a proper vehicle fully engineered uh, and had all the pieces together to deliver that. Mm -hmm. Some of the specs on these cars uh, are incredible. I mean, uh, 400 miles in driving range, uh, zero to 60 miles per hour in three seconds, uh, 800 horsepower. Um, I mean, these are like, the Tesla, Tesla fighter is, a, is an overused cliche, but I mean, really, these are like, I, I feel like somewhere Elon Musk had to like, you know, his jaw must have dropped when he heard about this. I mean. It, Where'd you guys come up with all this technology? Well, to give customers a reason to pick a new type of vehicle from a new brand, we need to, we need to make something that's demonstrably better you know, than, than the existing product set. So if we think about trucks or SUVs, uh, people are generally buying these because they have a lot of function and utility. You can put your kids, your gear, your stuff into them, but they do require compromises around the fuel economy. They're not particularly fun to drive. Um, they're not particularly uh, capable when it comes to combining on-road and off-road abilities. So we want to take those traditional weaknesses and make them strengths. So very efficient, incredibly fun to drive, uh, really truly uh, above everything else in terms of off-road capability and well beyond everything else in terms of on-road capability. Mm -hmm. 
Brian Gase is Rivian's chief engineer for special projects. So we're looking at the R1T. This is our uh, fully electric truck. It's a four motor, all wheel drive, capable uh, vehicle that comfortably seats five people with a lot of lockable storage. It's our entry level product. And completely battery electric plug-in car. No 100% electric. No gasoline whatsoever. Correct. Gas is bad for the environment. We want to make the world a better place. Right off the bat, we see it's got a very distinctive face, right? The headlights and everything. Tell us about those. So on the front end, we've got uh, the daytime running lamp through the middle, low beam, high beam, fog light. It looks modern. It looks electric. It embodies some capability. But also, if you go home and in three months I call you up, you can sketch the front end. It's, very, it's a very simple graphic with the vertical stadium lighting and the light through the middle. Having a battery electric pickup truck is still very much a novelty in an industry that pays its bills with trucks powered by massive V8 combustion engines. Rivian has developed a flexible platform it calls a skateboard. It contains four motors, one to drive each wheel, the battery, coolant, and thermal systems. What I want you guys to kind of notice is it's a completely flat underbody. And what that allows us to do is have very good aerodynamics and have a vehicle that with air suspension can lift and um, lower for ingress, egress, and for off-road capability. We can go through water that's uh, fairly deep, up to about a meter. and. We want to make sure that this can do everything that your truck would do. We can tow the 10,000 pounds, we can pull your trailer, uh, we can go up a 100% you know, grade hill because we want you to get out and have an adventure and go see the world. What that means, our underbody is extremely structurally uh, intact. From a performance perspective, the four electric motors give you a ton of on-demand torque, which helps with the towing, also gives you extremely fast, you know, uh, three seconds, zero to 60 time. So even if you're not a car enthusiast, it's extremely quick. That skateboard platform also underpins Rivian's battery-powered SUV. And what we're in now is the seven-passenger R1S. So it's our SUV. It's the same vehicle forward of the B-pillar. So we've been able to carry over that tooling, carry over all of that you know, safety structure, um, carry over the skateboard underneath with a shortened wheelbase. Yeah, so it's on the same platform. Yep, the so the only difference is we shorten the wheelbase on this one. Larry Parker, L-A-R-O-I-P-A-R-K-E-R. Uh, I'm the creative director here at Rivian. Well, uh, the brand really is uh, an artifact of all the consumer research we've done over the last few years. So uh, my career actually started in engineering and eventually industrial design, uh, which leveraged a lot of ethnography to influence the kind of products you develop. So when I started four years ago, our big focus was on meeting people. Parker says Rivian spent a lot of time talking to outdoors enthusiasts about how they live their lives. That feedback influenced how the vehicles were designed with lots of neat storage and cargo solutions and features like a flashlight that stores in the door panel. It charges from the same battery that powers the motors. I asked Parker about the novelty of an outdoors brand made here in Detroit. While I'm a, a car guy in a sense, I'm not a traditional car guy. I'm actually an outdoor enthusiast first. I, I grew up uh, skateboarding, snowboarding, mountain biking. I'm a Michigan surfer, which is a weird thing uh, in itself. Uh, so when I had the opportunity to come to Rivian a few years ago, uh, I came uh, under the intentions that we're building something that doesn't currently exist. And uh, always with the intentions on feeling and looking different and, and addressing a new market. Uh, so whether it was here or anywhere, um, it's a little outside of the, the tradition here uh, in Michigan right now. Uh, but you know, we have a strong legacy of outdoor enthusiasm and outdoor activity here. So it's, I think it is just naturally at home. Now, do you, do you have previous automotive experience? Did you work for one of the other companies in town? Uh, yeah, well, no, I've never worked for an auto manufacturer. I worked for a supplier. So my career started in engineering. I worked for an automotive supply, developing control cables and uh, almost 20 years ago now. Mm -hmm. uh, I ended up studying industrial design and I, my intentions were to work in the product design industry, uh, in the outdoor industry. I figured I'd leave Michigan mm -hmm. I'd go out west, I'd work for a mountain bike company or design tents or something along those lines. And I never thought I would be in the car world because I didn't think it was like necessarily the right place for me as a designer, as an innovator, a creator. Um, and then Rivian came along. I met RJ. Uh, There's about 18 people in a room at the time. Uh, it was a very different time, <laughs> ultimately. And uh, RJ had a vision. Uh, I was compelled by that and uh, I just decided to kind of take a le leap of faith and join. So, uh, you know, I've grown with the automotive industry as well, and I think that's part, an artifact of how it looks is the fact that 
this company is created by people who are kind of outside of that industry in some cases as well, you know. So uh, what's it like working here? Is it fun? Yeah. I mean, it's challenging. First and foremost, this has not been easy. I like to say I've worked eight years in the last four. Um, but it's amazing. I mean, it's, it's a place that's allowed us to grow, evolve. Um, it's a huge um, supporter of self-driven people. Um, there's a lot of really talented, smart individuals here who are extremely passionate, and that's probably one of the most exciting things. Just the passion of the team overall uh, has supported um, such tremendous growth, as well as creating really, really um, impactful products. Rivian has received a lot of attention since its coming out party last year in L.A., but it still has a long way to go before its products hit the streets. The company purchased a former Mitsubishi assembly plant in Illinois that it's been retooling to build the R1T and R1S. It's now taking pre-orders for both vehicles, which start around $61,500 for the truck, after a federal tax credit for electric vehicles. If all goes well, deliveries will start in late 2020. But the odds are stacked against Rivian in a cutthroat industry that hasn't been kind to many automotive upstarts. What can you tell us about where the money is coming from to float this company? You're not selling anything yet, so it's obviously not that. But so we're privately financed, um, and we've been really fortunate to have uh, great shareholders who have allowed us to be so quiet and allowed us to focus so much on, on execution without you know, showing anything publicly for, for years. And um, it, with that, it's allowed the facility you see here, the, you know, we've got now close to 700 people at the company, um, allowed us to really focus on that execution. A lot of money and, I mean, other things too, right? I mean, you got to pass federal testing. Vehicles got to be certified yeah. and homologated. There's, you know, there's a tremendous amount of work that goes into that as well. Uh, these are vehicles, I should note, that will be the safest SUVs and trucks in the world uh, in terms of their crash ratings. And, and a lot of that's <clears throat> the architecture. So the front is designed to absorb energy. The airbags within the, compart the passenger compartment have been set up to really protect the occupants. It's, and it's really well done from a truly first principles point of view. You're confident that you guys have what it takes to, to get, not that there's a finish line, but at least get to the finish line of getting these on the market and into customers' hands? Oh, very much so. Yeah, very much so. And that's why we waited until all the pieces were arranged before we showed anything. We didn't want to show something and only have half the pieces there. We wanted to have the capital, have the plan, have the team, have the technology, proven technology have the package, have the, the vehicle design, you know, wrapped around that technology. So what we see here and what we showed in LA is actually what we'll be going to production with. Let's take a minute for a little ad break. Today's episode is brought to you in part by Milo Digital. Milo Digital is a full service digital marketing agency that engineers quality results through data and innovative strategies. Learn more at milodetroit.com. Sven, so let's talk about this for a minute. And now is a great report. First, I got to say, that was definitely fun visiting the Rivian HQ. I was with you on that trip and it was really exciting and just a beautiful place and impressive setup. But let's get real here. What do you think about their prospects? Well, I asked that same question to Michelle Krebs. She's uh, an expert auto analyst with Cox Automotive. You know, she points out the the money question. I mean, uh Launching an automobile company is a notoriously expensive proposition, um, you know, just to, you know, I mean, think about this company. It's been in existence for 10 years now and it hasn't built or sold anything yet. Um, so uh, enormous costs, you know, they say it takes a billion dollars to design a new vehicle and, and you know, get it ready to for production and everything. And then you got to sell a bunch of them and make the, the money back. So that's a huge thing. She also points out that electric vehicles are still a tiny sliver, only about 2% of the overall market here in U.S., uh, with about half of that currently gobbled up right now by Tesla. Um, Tesla has a strong brand name by now. Rivian is still pretty unknown. I mean, up until L.A., nobody knew who these guys were, and you know, it's starting to turn heads, but the average person out there has no idea what Rivian is. Uh, one of the other problems she points out, uh, distribution. I mean, I asked the folks at Rivian, what their plans are to distribute these. And it's clear, I mean, by their own reckoning, they don't necessarily know yet. They haven't figured that out. They don't think they want to go with the dealership model. They talk about doing more of a direct sales model like Tesla does, but Tesla has problems with that too. I mean, you can't buy a Tesla here in Michigan. You have to drive to Ohio or one of the other states where they do allow direct sales. What do you think about their vehicles, Jer? They're gorgeous. And the SUV is definitely something that'll be up my alley if I could afford it. That was a beautiful, the and maybe it was the color and everything else, but the trim, that SUV with the frunk, I just love the idea of the front trunk. 
um, all the different accoutrement, the big displays. I it, It's so silly, but the two little gimmicks, and I mean, I know they're not gimmicks, but they kind of are, where you've got the flashlight that goes in the door, and then- That was super cool, yeah. And then that, in it's not in the SUV, it's in the pickup truck, but I really did like that storage area underneath. The gear tunnel, yeah. yeah it the runs gear between tunnel. The, the rear seats in the cab and the start of the, uh, the bed. Yeah, that's a super, super neat feature, for sure. For sure. We'll include plenty of uh, photographs of these vehicles on DailyDetroit.com. But that's going to do it for today's show. Thanks so much for listening to Daily Detroit. I'm Sven Gustafson. And I'm Jarrah Stays. Take care of each other, and we'll see you around Detroit. You're listening to the Podcast Detroit Network. Visit www.podcastdetroit.com for more information.